Welcome to Our Power Zoom edition. Let's see you all. Uh, Amber, Katie, Susan, and Rob. Amber, Katie, Susan, Rob, Grayson. Sweet. So, the, um, I know we've been posted. We're going to mute everybody just so we don't have them um, feedback. Sweet. Yeah, you're good. Um, studio is going really well. We spent, Emily, I spent a lot of hours last weekend. Um, uh, I was there Wednesday. Um, obviously, it's good Friday tomorrow, so we're going to celebrate by painting more and cleaning up. Uh, it's going to be, it's getting, the heaters are installed, um, the lighting's installed. We still need a switch to like, so we can dim the lights and change the lighting. Um, but all that should be in and, you know, knock on wood, uh, we'll be able to open whenever we're able to open the ten of the day we're saying right now is May 1st. So hopefully that would, that would work. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I uh, found out, uh, some information on my shoulder today and there's a likelihood I'll have, uh, surgery to reattach that tendon. On April 29th. It's not exactly great timing. I opened the studio on the first, but hopefully all the, um, the heavy lifting and moving and all the stuff um, will be out of the way before that surgery. So what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of do um, some of our normal warm-up that we normally do, but then we're going to switch and we're going to do some like shoulder, especially rotator cuff specific movement because i got a guy who um kevin velasco shout out who is a um therapist out in texas and he deals with rotator cuff injuries so we were talking online and he made me this whole pretty awesome um rehab routine and he was recommending that I've been doing a lot of this stuff, but not in this order, but he's recommending like start doing it now, um, continue doing it. And obviously after you have the surgery, you're already kind of like prepped for all the stuff that you're going to have to do. So we're going to kind of, um, and rotator cuffs is like, you may not have a rotator cuff injury. Um, I did not until the judo throw and, um, it was just sudden like, bam, tendons popped off. Um, I'm super not excited about like not being able to do handstands for three months, maybe more, all those things, but it is what it is. So let's start in a comfortable seat. Let's take a couple of moments to focus in on our breath. So inhaling through your nose, exhaling out your nose, filling up. Pressing out. Try to expand the breath as you bring it in. Really working to the edge of how much you can take in, take a little more. Hold it and press it out. And at the very end, I'm going to hold that breath out for just a moment. Inhale. Next up. So one of the things that I don't like about this virtual yoga thing is I can't see what's happening. Like I can't see your knee. I can't see the grimaces on your faces. I can't see all the things. So it's hard for me to um, change the way I'm teaching by, by observing the audience, which is something that I usually do. Um, so just know that if you're practicing this now, same rules apply. Don't do anything that causes you pain. Um, don't push yourself too hard. Make sure that you're breathing. It's a good indication if you're able to breathe in and breathe out that you're, that you're working in the area that you want to work, the zone you want to work in. Um, if you're watching this later, like if I post this on YouTube or something, again, Make sure that you're 
you know, physically capable of doing this type of um, movement. And don't do anything that causes you any pain. We're not forcing our bodies to do anything. Let's come to a tabletop position. So fingers spread wide. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Take another breath in. Another breath out. Cat cow rolls. As you inhale and tuck your hips, slide your belly forward, broaden your shoulders a little bit, kind of scoop through. That's your cow. Exhale, tuck your chin, tuck your hips, press through your hands and arch back, pressing all the air out, coming into cat. So with your breaths, shifting between those shapes, inhaling cow, exhaling cat. Inhale cow. Exhale, cat. Continue with your breath. Moving through those shapes. Standing, lengthening the time you're breathing, the amount that you're breathing, and pressing it all out. Let's do three more. Last one. Let's go ahead and find child's pose for a second. So hips toward heels, head relaxing down toward the mat, arms extended long in front. And anytime in the practice you need to take a break, you can come to child's pose. You join back in when you feel comfortable and you feel ready. Let's practice that breath because that really is the most important part of our practice, that deep belly breathing. Let's get into it. Let's tuck our toes, tuck our knees up, come into downward facing dog. You're upside down V. Your fingers are spread wide. Your neck is relaxed. You're energetically spinning towards your pinky so your elbows hug toward the center and your shoulders kind of plug back into your torso. Lift and lower your heels a few times. And continue to breathe. In and out. In, out. Lower your heels toward the mat. Stretch your calves, hamstrings in. Out. Look forward. Keep your hands down and walk forward. So you might have to pop up to your fingertips, that's okay. Walk into your forward fold. So head is relaxed, neck is relaxed. Bend in your knees, take those flat hands down. Press into your hands, engage your shoulders, and fold a little deeper, straightening your hamstrings. Pressing your heels down, breathing. Inhale, slide your hands up your legs, lengthen forward, crown your head forward, tailbone reaching back, shoulders drawing down your back, long spine, half a lift. Exhale, fold again. Take those fingertips, those flat hands down to the floor. With heavy hands, press up your heels and inhale, roll up through your spine. Slow, intentional, control. And all the way up, shrugging your shoulders up, rolling your shoulders back and down. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Sun salutation A, inhale, reach up, lengthen up, exhale, fold down, fingertips find the floor. Inhale for lengthen your spine, exhale, plant your hands and step your feet back to that strong plank position. Again, fingers spread wide, shoulders over wrists, heels reaching back, looking forward. You're strong here. To lower, we shift forward, we hug our elbows in, and we press down, belly to the floor. Flatten your feet, slide forward, hug your elbows back, and curl up into cobra. So the work's in your spine, the work's in your feet pressing down, you don't need your hands. Curl back for three, for two. Hands lower, tuck your toes up and back, down, facing dog. 
Again, bicep with your heels, relax your neck. Get to the top of the mat. Let's walk it forward again. Finding our forward fold. Deep down. Press your hands down. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold again. Heavy hands, press your heels, roll up, inhale. Shrug your shoulders up, roll your shoulders back and down, mountain pose. Take a breath in. Emily and Duchess are practicing over there. Take a breath out. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. Building up that heat, inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, plant your hands and work on floating your feet back. Shift forward in your plank and press to lower. Inhale, curl up to your cobra. Exhale, press back to your downward facing dog. Breathe here for three. Looking forward, bending into your knees, getting ready to make a little hop. Two. Exhale, spring press. And take your feet closer to the top of the mat, lift halfway. Feet fold down. Press your heels, inhale, roll up. Shrug your shoulders up, roll your shoulders back and down. Good, feet together. Squeeze your legs. Shift your weight forward and back. You want more weight in your heels and engage your glutes. Take your arms and reach them up. Begin to take your hips back towards your heels. Don't let your knees drive forward too much. Lift your toes if you can, look up. Spin your pinkies toward the center, if you're exposed, breathe. Bring those shoulders back, three. Good, take those hips lower if you can, two. And fold down. Inhale for lengthen your spine. Exhale, fingers down, left foot to the back of the mat. We're going to run as lunge with our right knee forward. So that knee is over the heel, but you're rotating out. Scissor your legs, lift your fingers. So find balance, maybe it's hands and hips. Knee rotating out, rear leg straightening, arms reaching up. Breathe, reach tall, press and lunge. So what are we doing in crescent lunge? We're trying to get that front thigh closer to parallel. We're working to straighten the rear leg. We're holding our shape for three, for two, hands down. Press into the mat, foot your right foot back to meet your left. Then it hovers as you shift forward and lower through. Inhale, upward facing dog. So we extend up and we bend back. Press your toes down, lift your legs and your hips up. Back, so make sure it's not our neck. Take a peek over your right shoulder. Look for your right foot. Left shoulder on your left foot. Breath in. Chin to chest and take it back to downward facing dog. Breathe here for three. Bending into your knees, looking forward where you're taking your feet to. You want to next up the spring. Lower your feet down. Lift halfway. And deep fold, feet together, hips back, arms high, reach. Sit your hips lower, reach your arms higher, bring your shoulders back and breathe for three. For two, rise up, interlace your fingers overhead, move from my knees so you can see. Lengthen and bend back. So squeeze your legs, hips forward, shoulders back, reaching arms, three, good, two, hands lower, mountain pose. Breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out, feet together, squeeze your legs, sweep your arms, sit your hips, fierce pose, breathe, reaching tall, weight in your heels, toes of light, arms high, look up, three, two, and fold. Inhale for length. Exhale, take your right foot to the back of the mat. So we're in that runner's lunge with our left foot forward. Left knee over left heel, we're taking out, so that your legs, lift your hands. Straightening your rear leg, bending into the front thigh, arms reach, crescent lunge. Breathe for three. Good, for two. Take your hands down, float your left foot back to meet your right, and it hovers as you shift through, pressing to lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So let's wide our stance in our down dog. There's some frog hops in place. So on an exhale, 
Press into your hands. Hop up and bend your heels towards your glutes. Lower your feet down. One. Get three good attempts. Bend. Float. Down. Two. Bend. Down. Three. Look forward. Hop your hand, feet up to meet your hands. Lift halfway. Deep fold down. Hips back on tight for your supposed reach. Lift. Lower. For three. Reach and tall. Spin your pinkies in toward the center, leaning your shoulders back. Two. Rise up. Interlace your fingers and then back. Hips forward, shoulders back, strong legs. Three, two, hands lower. Mountain pose. Good. Grab your water if you need it. You don't need it. We got that loud air conditioning turned off. So. Yeah, we were trying to test the heating panels in the studio yesterday. So I got them all wired up. And I was like, fired up. And it went from like 70 to like, I don't know, 85, 88. And then some of the workers came back in to finish something. And they're like, oh no, oh no. So I turned off. So uh, hopefully this weekend I'll get to, uh, I talked to the heating green people. One of the panels had a little like bend in it. And they're going to replace that. So that's super cool. Um, our lights are going to have, um, not only do they have a dimmer, but they'll change colors so we can like mood it. It's like what color class would you do in like full moon class? Orange? It depends on the color of the moon, like the pink moon. Make the lights pink. Um, it's not actually pink. It's pretty, pretty fancy stuff. Yeah. How do I feel? All right, good. I hope you're all right. Remember, you can take child's pose whenever you want. Let's go through some more standing poses. We're going to do that shoulder work and we're going to do some core work. So I realize our body, not everybody, but there's a lot of people not being as active as they normally are. I'm not. I mean, I'm not teaching at the hospital. I'm not teaching at the college. I usually ride my bike to those places. So, like, I'm missing a lot of my normal, like, weekly calorie burning outside activity. And uh, people are sitting around eating bread because there's no bread in the store. And I was at Walmart the other day, and this lady was like raking in the little Debbie things in her cart. Like she was buying like 14. I don't know who needs all that, but somebody. So if you've been eating bread and little Debbies, you're going to need an apple at the core. Let's start back in our um, mountain pose, top of the mat. Feet are hip width distance apart. Lift your right knee up into the air. So work to find balance by looking at something that's not moving. And see if you can lift your right knee a little higher. Now extend your right leg forward. Kicking. Bend it back. We're going to find warrior one. So take the leg forward on the back as your torso is forward. So in warrior one, the outer edge of your foot is down. So you're pressing your right hip forward. Right leg step back, right hip just move forward. Hands at your hips, you can feel that rotation. So when your elbows are pointed to the side, your hips are pretty square, bend in that front knee a little more. Get the thigh closer to parallel. Don't let me pass your foot while your stance, if it happens, to reach up. Square hips, front knee moving toward parallel, arms reaching high, right hip squaring forward, warrior one, breathe. So try to keep your torso over your hips, especially as we move into like warrior two. People have a tendency to kind of like lean a lot. So now let your rear foot open, let your arms open, let your hips open, but don't let your front knee open. Warrior two. So looking at that front knee, if it went in, rotate it back out. Get into that front thigh a little more. Look over your front fingertips. Keep your rear arm strong. Don't let it do any of this crap. Strong warrior two, looking forward, breathing for three. Good. Two, flip your left palm, tilt back to peaceful warrior. Your left arm goes up, your arm slides down. So you're getting stretching your left ribs, your left side body, 
We make it a little more intense by bending into that front thigh with you. Breathe for three. It's forward. Two. Left forearm to left knee, right arm in the air. Stack your right shoulder over your left shoulder. And your fingers are actively reaching toward the ceiling. Side angle one. So if you're working other options, like removing the arm, do that. Right arm, keep it alongside your right ear, extended side angle. A little extra, take your left arm by your left ear, then that right shoulder back, wherever you are, breathe for three. Two, and tilt it back to peaceful warrior. Carve your hands to the floor, step your left foot back to meet your right. Take a vinyasa, lowering through. Inhaling to upward face. Exhaling to downward face. Good. Breathe here in your down bow for three. Looking forward, you're taking your feet two. Bend into your knees, exhale to a little hop forward. Lift halfway. Deep fold down to your hip with distance. Let's roll up slow. Inhale. Shoulder, shoulder back and down. Good. And over to the right, call that left knee up. Drishti of your gaze, something's not moving, lifting the left knee higher, extend the left leg forward. Bend it, lean the torso forward, take the left leg back. We're going to land in our warrior one. So the outer edge of your left foot is 45 degrees. You're pressing the left foot forward. You're bending into the right thigh. Torso is over your hips. Right knee rotating out towards your pinky toe, reach your arms in the air. Warrior one. Breathe here. So those cues, all the stuff like hip squaring, knee bending, arms reaching, they don't stop when you get into a shape. You're always adjusting. Trying to bring balance on both sides of your body. Breathe for three. For two. Warrior two, let your left foot open, let your hips open, let your arms open. Don't let your front knee go in. Keep it rotating out. A little deeper in that thigh. Keep the rear arm strong, warrior two, and breathe here. Keep your torso over your hips. Don't lean forward too much. For three, good. Two, peaceful warrior, right arm tilts up, tilt back. Stretching the right ribs, the right side body. Left arm can slide down in the left leg. One knee a little more, bend in the front thigh a little more as you lean back. Three, Two, right forearm to right knee. Stack your right shoulder over your left shoulder. Left shoulder over your right shoulder. Take your left arm to the air. Side angle one. Any options that you're practicing or taking your own way. Extended. Extended both arms. Three, wherever you are. For three. For two. And peaceful warrior. Call your hands, step your right foot back to meet your left. Lower through, vinyasa. Inhale, upward face. Exhale, down face. Breathe in your down dog. For three. Good. Two. Look to the top of the mat. Walk or hop your feet up to meet your hands. Halfway lift. Deep fold down. Press down, inhale, roll up. Still in control. And mountain pose. Good. Let's take the right knee back up. Step the right leg back. This time we're moving into triangle, so we're straightening the left leg. Come into warrior two arms. Lean and bend at the waist, taking your left arm down to your straightening left leg. Now, stack your right shoulder over your left shoulder. So make that the primary, the, tor the torso, the trunk of then you take your right arm in the air. So what are we working on? Straightening the front leg, stacking the shoulders, neck is relaxed. You can look down, you can look forward, you can look up. Breathe in your triangle shape for three. For two, let's tilt it back to these four. You're bending the front knee, tilt it back. So what we're gonna do is bring our hands to our hips and we're just gonna rotate. So we're gonna turn so our right leg is straight. Left foot is like warrior one, straighten into the right leg. Come into warrior two arms, bend at the waist, 
and take your right arm down to your straightening right leg. Stack your left shoulder over your right shoulder. Take your left arm and reach it straight up into the air, trying to pose. So straightening that front leg, stacking the shoulders, reaching with the left arm. Neck is in a safe, comfortable position. And breathe when you're trying for three. Good. For two. Let's tilt it back up to peace. We'll bend into that front thigh and tilt it back. Good. Hands to your hips. Spin your right foot forward so you're in a wide legged stance. So both feet are parallel. Get in your knees a tiny bit. Take your arms overhead. Keep your arms by your ears as you lean forward. So hips back, torso forward, and stop when your torso is parallel with the floor, reaching, getting as much length as you can, holding here for three. For two, continue down with your hands. Now walk your hands forward like an extended downward facing dog. Press your hips back towards your heels and then relax your neck. Press the out edges of your feet and work to straighten your legs, getting that hamstring stretch. Breathe. For three. Good. For two. Walk your hands back towards your body. Lift your feet up a little bit and place your fingers on the outside of your feet to your grasp. Grabbing around your feet, lengthen forward, draw yourself down. So you're pulling yourself down, your elbows are pointed up. Working to straighten your hamstrings, relax your neck, and breathe. For three, for two, release your hands. We'll turn them away and walk them underneath you. So it's helping you draw yourself down, maybe a little bit deeper. Legs are straightening, hands relaxing. Breathe in here. Three. Good. Two. Walk your hands back. The neutral position. And let's just lower our knees down to the mat. Excellent. Good warm up. Grab your water if you need it. We go into some of that rotator cuff specific things. Um, I'm actually going to use a few props today. I know I didn't tell anybody to bring props. So, um, depending on how the class is, like we may save it and we can use this as like a rotator cuff specific class uh, down the road. There's some of the props that I have. We can do most of this without the props because I have a five pound dumbbell. I have a yellow. Elastic band. I'll order some bigger ones today. I have a gray band with some handles on it. That's going to be good. So the first, the first thing we're going to do uh, is called sideline shoulder external rotation. So we're going to come down onto our side. I could just chill. And we're going to take our elbow and kind of pin it into our hip. Now we're going to take our arm and reach it up so your fist is in the air, and then lower the arm back down toward the floor. So if you don't have any shoulder impingement, you might be like, this is really stupid. This isn't really doing anything. You would add the weight. Lift the arm up. And you bring it back down. So we should continue breathing as you're doing these exercises. We're gonna do 10, one, six, seven, eight, nine, good, and we're going to change sides. So you lie on your side. You point your elbow on your hip. 
and you reach that arm up, and you lower it back down. So you can also, one thing that you can do, I kind of failed to mention, you can keep doing it. Is we're, we're, we're trying to make this like an eccentric movement. So that's like, as you come up, you try to slow it down with your muscles. And as you come down, you also try to slow it down. So it's like a negative. And that's really good for your tendons and your ligaments. You might even do this way. I'm not torn. There you go. 10 of these. Coming up. You can make it harder just with your, your mind. So you might ask, why would I care about my shoulders, and my rotator cuffs? So a lot of the stuff that we are doing in our studio, the handstand work, the forearm stand work, um, headstand work, all those things require crow, crane, Budokan, all those things require healthy shoulders. So just doing a little bit of this rehab work, it may seem like, I'm not doing a lot, but if you're having problems with it, you're like, oh, I really do need to work on this. It's probably not a bad idea. So the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, external rotation. So again, it's an eccentric movement. So I'm gonna have my elbow this time plug into my hip. I'm gonna grab a, some resistance so that you can see what it'll be like. And I'm gonna take the elbow out. I'm gonna let it go. We're going to go in first. So I'm going to take the arm. I'm going to bring it in. Hold this with me. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to come in and out. Try not to let your elbow move off your ribs. And in and out. In. This is actually the internal rotation. Maybe. Five. Slow it down. Use your muscles. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. To the right side. Point that. Put that elbow on your side. In and then out. In and then out. So imagine you have that band pulling it. Oh, it's pulling it back. Good. Just barely holding together at this point. Good, 10 minutes. Good. So now we're going to do the external rotation. So I'm going to go out. So I'm pulling something across my body, like the strap over here, and in. So make it strong as you go out and in. Breathe. Good. Right side. Imagine you're pulling that band. Out. So the band's coming across your body. In. Out. In. Out. In. Don't worry, we're going to be doing some stuff that we're more used to in just a second. Good. Horizontal abduction with resistance. So we've done this with a strap. So if you have a strap, you can grab it and like pull it away. Right? But it doesn't move like these nice bands do. So I'm going to do a band. And I'm going to take it in my arms. So I've got a good grip. And I'm going to pull 
as much as I can and open, and then I'm gonna lower it, I'm gonna come back. Yeah, so that's one. So come out. And I've seen this machine like gems, and I used to like laugh at it. What is this thing? Who would do shoulder abduction? So if you don't have a strap, imagine. It's really hard when you're slowing down. Two, three minutes. Good. Now some stuff that you're all more used to. Then come to the plank. Full plank. Let's talk about what full plank means. Fingers spread wide. Feet stepping back, hips on high or low. We're gonna hold it. Our power stop for 45 seconds. So if you're in plank right now, you need to get out because that's your it's a glutton for punishment. Fingers are spread wide, shoulders over wrist. Step your feet back one at a time, hips on high or low, and begin. Look forward. Breathe. Twenty seconds. Can you do it? Feels reaching back, looking forward, pressing the ground away. Twelve seconds. Six seconds. Five. Four. Three. Take it. Man. Child's pose. If you need. So some things like if that was difficult, holding a plank for 45 seconds, you should hold more planks for 45 seconds. Um, I know when like the first couple times I went through like the Brian Ogonod, like double your core strength programs, and that's where like um, I got really interested in doing the L set work. Well, those workouts that he would have us do, it would be like um Five L sits on blocks for 30 seconds. And when I first started, it was like, I couldn't do it. And a lot of you might remember the first couple of times you did L sits, how hard it was. And every now and then I'll fool you and I said, We're going to do L sits. And you think it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Maybe I put on a minute. People are able to do it. Because the, the seconds are just something in your brain, right? You're like, Oh, I can't do it more than 35 seconds. Well, we're going to do one more plank hold. Get ready to get set up. Step your feet back one at a time. Hips on high or low. Breathe. Here we go. Fingers spread wide, actively pressing into the ground, looking forward, shifting your shoulders over your wrist if you can. And breathe. Keep breathing. Time goes. People are like, life is short. Time flies. Well, not when you're doing plank. Doesn't fly. Gets really slow. Breathe. You got it. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So we did it for a minute, achieved, added some fun. One more on the shoulder rehab work. Let's see. He entitled this quadra head thoracic rotation with arm straight. Many of you are used to this, we've already done it. We do it in a lot of classes. We're going to start on all fours and bring our right hand to the middle. 
Then we're going to reach our left arm up and stack our left shoulder over our right shoulder. And that's one. We'll do 10 of those. Reach up, hands active, pressing through the hand on the floor, two. Try to feel your shoulders moving, your thoracic spine rotating. Breathe the whole time. Good. Change sides. So left hand is down. Rotate open, stack the right shoulder over the left shoulder, reach that right arm in the air, and then come down. Ten times. Really feel the shoulders rotating. The torso moving. Not the shoulder. With the whole of your back. Good. And good. Shake it out. Shoulders around. We're going to meet with our feet at the top of the mat. Knees up. Hands behind your knees. Come into a boat. So what are our options here? You can keep your hands here the whole time. You can straighten your legs a little more. You can take your hands away and reach up. Keep your chin tucked, keep your kind of belly button hugging in a little and breathe. Breathe here in your boat shape. For five, good, four, three, two, and down. So we're going to use the boat to do what I call V-ups. So we're gonna to have to lower ourselves down and then we're gonna to have to come back up. So those of you that practice with me, pretty used to what this looks like. Everything's forward when we come down. You can take your arms up and then as you exhale, come back up. Then lower them down, join in. Legs are reaching, arms are reaching, shoulders are up. Exhale, curl up. Two. The ups, lower down. Exhale, come up. Three. So you can bend your knees and use your hands whenever you need to. Work on the negative part. Lowering. Come up four. Lowering. Slow, 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 slow. Come up five. And two more. Lower it. Come up six. One more. Lower, 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 lower. Come up seven. And lower down to the back. Take a shavasana for a second. How's your breathing? So the next movement, and of course specific that we're gonna do, hollow body rocks. So again, this is something that really like helps um, of the handstand position and it helps build core strength. But how we get into position to do the hollow body rock is we have to do that V up again. So this keeps your core engaged. If your legs are lifted, you reach forward, and you find that position. So your arms are reaching, your legs are reaching, your shoulders are up. So meet me in this hollow body position. Now keep the hollow body, hollow body position and start to rock up. Two, reach the arms back. Three, reach the legs forward. Four. 
five, six, breathe, seven, eight, nine, ten, corpse bust. Breathe. Come to a bridge position. So that's feet down. Feet are hip width distance, knees are up. Elbows pressing into the floor. I just lift into a bridge just so we all remember the feeling. Press the heels down, lift the hips up. That's bridge, back in. Pressing to lift, engaging the glutes and breathing. Three more breaths. And take it down. So the next thing that we're gonna do is called bridge crunch. You're gonna to have to like lift up into the bridge a little bit. And then as you exhale, you come up. Go down slow like you're holding a rope. Bridge up. Crunch up two. Slow down. Bridge up. Crunch up three. Good. We need four more. Slow as you go down. Bridge up. Come up four. Go down slow. Bridge up. Come up. One more. Bridge up. Come up. Last one. Lower down as slow as you can. Lowering down. Resisting, three, two, on your back. Deep, steady breath. Bring your feet back to the mat, sit up. And take your hands behind your hips and place your feet down so your knees are up. And we're going to lift our feet off the ground and reach them forward. Inhale, exhale, bring your knees towards your chest. That's one. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knees towards your chest, two. Crunch up, get small. Lengthen, knees towards chest, three. Breathe, lengthen, knees toward chest four, lengthen, knees toward chest five, lengthen, halfway there, six, breathe, lengthen, seven, lengthen, eight, lengthen, nine, last one, lengthen, ten, down on your back. Back, take your knees out to the side. Press the bottoms of your feet together. You've got a diamond shape with your feet. Place a hand on your belly, a hand on your heart. Deep breath. A lot of core work. A lot of small muscle shoulder work. Let's bring our knees back up and hug our knees in towards our chest. So squeeze them in, reach your hands around the top of your legs, pull them up, circle on your lower back and your hips a few times. Going in both directions. Coming back to center, keep your left knee hugged in, extend your right leg long, forward and all the way down. Lower your head and shoulders all the way back. Pull that left knee up towards your left shoulder. 
Now, we're not spinal twisting, we're opening our left knee out to the left. So reach your right arm out to the right and open the bent knee out toward the left. So think of what a tree pose might look like. And breathe. So you're guiding that left knee down toward the ground. Inhale as you bring that left knee back up, hug it in towards your chest, give you a good squeeze. This time reach your left arm out to the left, so that arm and shoulder stay down, and guide the bent leg across your body, coming in the spinal twist. So work to keep your left shoulder down as you draw that left knee across, and breathe. Take three more breaths on the side. Bring that knee, kick the left knee back up. Hug both knees in towards your chest. Squeeze them in. Circle on your lower back and your hips. Keep the right knee hugged in. Take the left leg long. Shoulders and head back, pull the right knee up towards your right shoulder. Give it a good squeeze. Reach your left arm out to the left. Your arm and your shoulder stay down. Open the right knee out to the right. Lowering that right knee in tree pose. Right knee toward the floor. Great. Deep steady breath here for three, for two, and inhale that right knee back up, hug it in towards your body, reach your right arm out to the right, spinal twist, draw that bent leg across your body, away from that right shoulder that's pinned down, your left hand is guiding that bent leg across, and you're breathing. Three more breaths on the side. And inhale that left knee back up. Hug both knees in towards your chest. One last time, give a good squeeze in. And if there's any movement or shape that you feel like you need to complete your practice, go ahead and take that now for just a minute or two. It could be happy baby, it could be real, it could be anything. It could be an inversion, headstand. Or if you're ready to go into final relaxation, feel free to do that as well.
meeting in our final relaxation. Let's on your back, arms comfortably out by your side, legs extended long, feet relaxed out to the side, heavy into the ground. You can allow your breathing just to go back to its regular state. Such an important part of the practice. It gives your body just a little bit of time to kind of soak in the movements, really embody the things that you've asked it to do. Deepen your breath. Bring some movement into your toes, fingers, wrists. When you next big inhale, take your arms and stretch them long toward the back of the room. So reach back through your fingers, forward through your feet. Give yourself a big full body stretch. And as you exhale, bring your feet to the mat till your knees are up. You roll to your right side. You can use your right arm like a pillow. You can walk your hands a little closer to your body. Press yourself up to a comfortable seat. You can cross-legged or kneeling. Sit nice and tall. Finish our practice with three rounds of deep belly breath. So exhale out as much air as you can. Let your belly draw up and in. Inhale through your nose to fill up. Exhale, press out. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, press out. One more, inhale. Exhale. In closing, you can bring your hands together toward heart center. I appreciate the effort that you all put into the practice and for logging in and doing all this stuff that we're having to do nowadays to make this happen and for your support of the teachers and of the studio and of the new studio that we're opening. And hopefully we'll all be back to somewhat normal pretty soon. Hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and good Easter Sunday is coming up. Yeah, see you again very soon. Awesome. I'm gonna stop the recording. And then if anybody wants to say anything, we'll I'll turn the mics back.